Um, hello everybody, really apologies, really apologies, really apologize for the delayed start today. Um, make sure everybody's here. Can everybody hear? That is the main thing. So first of all, before we go any further, the usual thing that we say every week, can everybody hear me? Just let me know in the chat. Everything looks okay here, on, 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 that's okay. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee before anyone comes on in that case then. <laughs> Hmm. And obviously, more to the point, can you hear Louise? Can you hear me? Oh, what you got on there, Louise? You've got all things all over your screen today. Have I? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, if you put on my screen, we're late. So, so sorry that we're late. We've, um... Oh, brilliant. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's just manic. Sharon's off. I miss Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> She's only been on holiday one day. <laughs> Because we've got to serve in the shop. Which is great, but then it's... I forget how... Oh, how well, hard it is. I've done something, Louise. I've done something. You there we go. You put me wonky, have you? No, I just cut the fade to black again. Sorry, go on. Yeah. So I missed... I missed That's why mm. we're late. I was, um, I was helping a gentleman choose a watch. And I, he just wanted to try all the watch. So, which is great, which is what you do when you go shopping, isn't it? it so, um, yeah. Then we had to go across the post. Rebecca had to go and take the post over first. I had to sell, serve two old ladies with some nomination as well. <laughs> Why would you say that? Two old ladies. <laughs> so how's everyone doing today? Good um, auto on there. That's better. Hope everyone's okay and everyone's had a lovely, lovely uh, week so far. Let's remove that scalp off the top of there because it's looking a bit dangerous if that falls. <laughs> you never know. Everyone's okay. Good, good, good. Lots of chat going on, which is what we like to see. Um, lots of questions, and I can see the questions, but I'm not going to jump ahead of the queue because we're going to get Louise to go through them one by one. We have been having problems with our internet again over the last few days. It's been dropping out around about half past four. So apologies for that. If it does drop out, hang with us, so to speak and we will be coming back, so don't worry about that. I know they're working around the corner, um, putting a new gas main in, so goodness knows what's gonna happen. Anything you wanna say, Louise, before we start? Oh, I don't think, there was something I wanted to, ah, oh, yes, there was something I want to say. Um, my email address, louise.andrewberry.co.uk, um, which we... I got today, I've got the board on today. Sorry, yes. Go, go. Um, I logged into louisaandreberry.com this morning, which is another, but I don't use that at all. I'm not even sure why I logged into it. I think it was by mistake. Um, so that, the email address that you send anything to is louisaandreberry.co.uk. So the .com is largely um, unmonitored. It's not really my email address. So I'm so sorry if I've missed any emails. Uh, we could get them redirected, couldn't we, to, to co.uk, but there's so much rubbish Spam. and, yeah, um, yeah. and Spam. emails that, but they still filter through, don't they, regardless of how many times sometimes... Um, or you can put hundreds of filters in place. Yeah, so that's why through. that one doesn't really get, because but they just get swamped in amongst all the, the, the stuff that nobody really wants to read and then people are emailing me things that I really really do want to read so I'm so sorry if you've sent them something to louisaandrebo.com that I haven't answered but if you send anything to uh, louisaandrebo.co.uk I will definitely answer so it's because that the dot com is like an advertised email address that the robots the harvesters take it and they harvest the email address okay the dot current UK I don't think we've got you out there you see apart from these mm. no one knows about that one so that's the reason being. We've got the andrewberry.com website. Yeah. So they just go on there. But this one, dot UK, this reason why we use this one is because it is one that is not in the public domain. It is not out there. So the robots don't harvest it. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, email me on co.uk, please. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because I yeah. don't use the other one at all. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and also we're looking at an, our workshop. Yeah. Again, sorry for the delay in this. We're going to try and get the graphics done tonight for this, but we're going to be having our monthly workshop a few weeks behind, I'm afraid, but you can understand the, the problems we've had here in work. Um, it's going to be all about bezel setting. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking, going to be looking at bezel settings, ovals, 
and rounds. We're going to be making up an actual bezel set in here and producing one into a pendant and one onto a ring. So that is what our workshop is going to be. It's going to be this Thursday. Okay, yeah. Or do you want to say so Saturday we were going to say, didn't we? Um, Saturday afternoon Saturday would afternoon. need to be. Yes. Or Thursday evening, because they so, are literally the only times this week. Should we say Saturday, 3 o'clock? Okay, I'll find you some nice cabochon yeah, stones. Yeah, do you think so? Saturday, yeah. 3 o'clock? Okay, so, yeah, you sure? You can see, mm. we literally, off the spur of the moment. We well, just... yes, you owe me a takeaway then, after right. that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's going to be Saturday, 3 p.m., all the graphics are going to be done tonight because we've been, oh, the reason being is that we've been interviewing for jobs again. Rebecca's still with us, absolutely brilliant there. Um, we just need someone else on, we needed someone else on the sales team. Yeah, we needed someone else in the store, didn't we? Just to, into the shop to deal with the customers. So we've been interviewing for staff for that last week. So it has just been manic and like my mother, my father says, how many staff have you got working for you now? <laughs> Do you know what though? It's so time consuming and expensive, isn't it, recruitment? You yes. forget until you go to recruit somebody how time consuming and expensive it is, mm. the whole process. Because mm. it's mm -hmm. going to take a few months before we get the new person up to speed. Mm -hmm. So again, it's going to take more time for us more effort and we have to sort of try and fit everything in around it. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, that's not your problem, enough guys. Of all <laughs> that, enough of all that. So the graphic is going to be going out tonight. I've sorted out the uh, the shopping cart where you go and pay. So if you're a paid member of At The Bench, you get the workshop for free, but you still have to sign up using a coupon code that's going to be coming out over the next day or so. If you're not a paid member of At The Bench, it's £15. You then will get the recording and you've got that for life upon the At The Bench um, dashboard, your members dashboard, you have access for life with that. It's going to be broken down, we're going to be doing things, we're not going to be using bezel wire or bearing wire, that's cheating a little bit, so we're going to be making up bezels, back plates for pendants and for rings, starting from the very beginning, round stones, oval stones as well. We're not going to touch irregular shaped stones, we're going to do a, like a specialised workshop in a few months time on that. Everything's going to be going out to you, so £15 for non-members. It's included with your membership if you're a paid member of At The Bench, and that's going out tonight. And the emails will be going out tomorrow. Fingers crossed you have all the codes. And don't forget, everything that we use within the workshop is going to be, you, uh, it's going to be uh, discounted in the store as well. So the torches, the pliers, the buff sticks, everything apart from the metal, you can get at a discount, and we'll have all that in the emails and also on the link that we're going to be sending to you when you pay or when you put in your coupon code for the workshop. Is that it, Louise? Yes. Is that it? You sure? Everything? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, it is Monday, the 13th of June, 4pm, a little bit after, time for our Q&A. And again, we do, actually, I know it's 20 past 4, but we do have to finish basically 5 past 10 past 5 on the dot again today because Sharon is gone on holiday and we need to get downstairs, don't we? We need to stop all these holidays. I, do you know what I mean? Now you know why I moan so much about staff, about the team having holidays. They don't, they, mm. they, they shouldn't be moaned about, they're fabulous. They are fabulous. But, but they holidays. shouldn't be like holidays. They should, they, they should be here for the love of it. <laughs> okay, let's have a question. It's Monday, 4pm, 13th of June. I've done it before, I'll say it again. Time for our Q&A news, let's have our first question. Okay, first question is from Fiona. This may be a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question. Um, but my tumbler has been used for stones. Will it be okay to tumble silver and gold or is this a no-no? My stainless steel bits are brand new and clean. You do have to make sure that it is completely thoroughly um, cleaned. You must make sure there's not one bit. If you've been using stones, I expect you've been using grit with it. Make sure every single little bit of grit is out of it. Rinse it, rinse it, and rinse again. Make sure everything is spotlessly clean. You should be fine. Put in some barrel bright. Put in a teaspoon, basically for the for the barrel that you've got. Fill it with the shot, about a third full. Make sure the shot is covered with the water. Teaspoon of barrel bright. Make sure it's well mixed. I put the tumbler on for five or ten minutes just to get it all nicely uh, mixed up then put your pieces in and I think you should be fine and you should be good to go with that, absolutely. But make sure there is no grit because a little bit of grit will scratch and that's what you do not want. Louise, Yeah, question. I think we've missed questions because my chat starts with Fiona's question but 
people are talking about a heart-shaped opal. Um, so I'm awfully sorry for missed the question, but please put it back in the chat if I've, if you posted any question before um, uh, Fiona's question. Um, so Alex is asking, I want to set a two mil round shallow cabochon in a flush or gypsy setting. What burr or tool should I use to cut a flat bottom seat for the cab? Okay, so you can buy special burrs. You can buy burrs that are conical, but upside down conical. So here's the shaft coming down. Usually you get the burrs that are tapered like that, but you can actually buy burrs that are that way. Okay, so they are perhaps not as bad as that, but they are that, like an inverted cone, okay? So they're inverted. Yeah, so they're inverted. And yes, you've got that, which then does produce a seat that is sort of like that, which in theory, ah, oh, I put my board, I forgot I had my board one. There we go. It's an inverted cone. And really that will produce a bit of a seat if you keep that vertical, but if you have that at a slight angle, like that, uh, you can then cut a nice vertical channel. And because it's flat bottomed here, you can get a nice flat bottom in here, whether it be like that or whether it be like that. You could try and use something like um, a taper this way, but there's no real cutting action right at the tip here. But if you have that, an inverted cone, it should be just right, the best type of burr to use for a flat or what you could even do is get, um, uh, you can always get um, a ball burr. Okay, so there's your ball burr and there's your cut in there. And what you could always do, and I have done this in the past, is, is grind off the bottom so it is that way. And I've used that on the odd occasion when I don't have an inverted comb to do it. So that would be an ideal way of doing it. And again, that would produce a nice flat bottom as well. Um, perhaps what I would do is drill so far to the depth that you need it, then use that because there's no real teeth on this bottom edge and if you grind a half, a, a half ball burr, there is no teeth down here. So make sure that it is basically drilled, flat bottomed, or even when you drill it, you're going to get a slight conical into the hole. But yeah, inverted, super duper, Louise. Let yeah. us have another one. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Jill is asking, um, working with titanium, do I need any specialised saw blades or drill bits? Um, you don't, but titanium is really hard. Don't expect to use the saw blades or the drills again on a precious metal. They, basically, it, when you come to use your your saw blades on titanium, you're going to find it's going to wear out the blades really quickly. So don't worry if, you, if you're sawing and the blades become blunt, it's natural with titanium. Likewise with, um, with drill bits, make sure you use plenty of lubrication, whether you use a bit of oil, a bit of wintergreen, or even use some burr life, some cut lube. Make sure the drill is thoroughly, thoroughly wet, lubricated, and it will cut through. But as I said, don't expect to use that drill again on precious metals or anything like that unless you know how to sharpen the bottoms of your drills because it will blunt it. It will take the edge off. So no special tools. Just make sure that they're brand new blades coming in, brand new drill, and you should be able to cut and drill through successfully. Okay. Yes, get another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I Good for you. Jim is saying, I'm completely new at this. Welcome. Um, question is, what is a good thickness of sterling silver for the base of an inlaid <laughs> ring? And you should never, ever eat sweets at your bench. When you're working. But I'm not working. So, um, in fact, this was a question that um, we had emailed to us um, making up boxes. Um, and I was making up a box with a one millimeter thick wall, but I only used half a millimeter thickness for the bottom. Why? Because the bottom and the top really needs no strength. So if you're using um, an inlay, was it an inlay or is it just like a um, A base of an inlay ring. Uh, okay. 
you don't need much more than half a millimeter. Um, I'm not quite sure what gauge that is. I really must get a chart in front of me to find out what gauge half a millimeter is. I've got my, I've got my sheet to hand. Glass it on. Half a millimeter, where's half a millimeter on here? Here we go. Uh, what's that, 23 gauge. Yeah, 24 gauge. 24 gauge, you don't really need to go much thicker than that. If you do, it's gonna add no real difference to the item. It doesn't really need that much strength. So that sort of thickness would be just fine. You could go thicker. It's not gonna add anything to the design. It may not even be seen, and you're gonna be wasting a little bit of money for the extra thickness in metal. So yeah, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of a millimeter, 24 gauge, I think should be just about fine for you, absolutely. Can you hear that beeping? It's, it's um, next door, it's mm, the forklifts. It's the forklifts, yeah. It is, let's have another question. <laughs> Whilst I have my sweeties. Okay, um, Bram is asking, I want to make a silver necklace for my girlfriend, um, but she only likes uh, thin necklaces. Do you have any tips on making a necklace as thin as possible and how thin can I expect to get it? Right. Um, I think the best way to make a nice thin necklace is to make up some round links and then stretch them to make them like a long loop. Um, it, obviously the thinner, the smaller the links, the more links you're gonna have. And there's gonna become a time when you can't go too small, otherwise the soldering is all gonna be um, really difficult and all the links are gonna get soldered together. So uh, what you could easily do, get a jump ring, solder it, all right? Then you get a pair of pliers, so here's your pliers, here's your round nose pliers, like that there. Here's the handles down here, okay? You put the link over the pliers, you pull the pliers open this way, so you push your pliers together, apologies for that. In was this way, it forces the link out, which then will elongate the link. So it is more like that. Okay, so now you've got the, perhaps the solder joint at the top. What you can do then, you've got a few of those. Yep, you can join them now with a small little link and then you can solder that small little link. Because you've got these, and if you have the solder joint on one end and the one end down here, can we see this one? Yes, you can. Um, there's no way now that these melt, these joints are gonna melt, and you can join it with that. So you've got like a long link, short link, long link, short link, long link, short link. And you, then you can make this really nice and thin, and that would be the best way to do it. You can make these whatever size you want. The problem is if you make them too small, you may get a chance of this solder messing up these links. So you can make a curb chain, you can make a trace chain, but then you're gonna have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of links. Making it like this, you can make it nice and thin with a link, long like that, with another link. And I think that'll look really nice. Hmm. Yeah, 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 I think that'd be very nice. So that would be my sort of idea for a th the thinnest chain you can get. You could even come along and fold that link in half like that. And then you could put another link through that one. So it's almost like a loop in loop chain. You could do that. There's a, someone at the bench that does that. So you solder all these links together, fold them in half and then thread one through and you end it with a chain like that as well. And that's really nice to do as well. But there's lots and lots of projects out there. Okay, Lou, let's have another one. Okay. Um, Phil is saying, thanks, Andrew and Louise, for the advice earlier this week on sand casting my diamond-shaped gem. That was oh, gorgeous. Oh, that, that was, was so cool. And yeah. um, the net casting was spot on with no pits. Brilliant. Can you send me a picture when it's done? Because I'd love to see it. Because the, the, the picture of the cast you sent looked cool. Really good. So I'd yeah. love to see it all finished. Yeah, brilliant. Um, Good, I'm glad to hear Excellent. that. Excellent, yeah, that's good to hear. Um, Holly is saying, my radial disc, three grits, and not removing scratches well on pieces that have different layers, layers and around sweat soldered bezels. Do I need more grits or do I need other attachments and tools? Um, what I would always try and do, if you're putting layers or putting one piece onto another, always try and look ahead. 
always think, well, if I solder the bezel onto a back plate and the back plate is sticking out on the side, can I polish that up easily? If I say, yes, I can, great, go ahead. If you think, do you know what, I'm having a bit of problem trying to get in. So say you've got your back plate and your bezel goes on and you've got a problem trying to clear some scratches in that area there. Well then, before you solder it, polish up the back plate so it's nice and shiny, just so there's no scratches on it. What you want to do is try and finish each step before you go on to the next. If you um, have got a setting here, yep, and you're soldering it onto um, a shank, like here, by here, this area of the shank by here, really difficult to polish up if there's all scratches on it, so polish up the shank before you solder the setting on it. Um, it just makes life so much easier to think ahead. Just don't go da da da, put one layer on top of another one, on top of another one, on top of another one. Oh, damn, how am I gonna get into here and polish this? Polish it beforehand. If you do have a problem getting in here, radio discs are great, but how about using white nylon brushes? Rebecca likes white nylon brushes. She's a good girl. She said, oh, I love these, she said. So, white nylon brushes, again, we sell them on the store. They're not goat's hair, they're not horse hair, they're not bristle, they're white nylon brushes. I find that the natural hairs molt. You spin them, they, they can fly in that, they stick in your top, stick in your jumper, stick in your, and, and, or itch, and you pull out these little short hairs and I don't like them at all. So the white nylon brushes, which, hang on a second, let's fingers crossed, nothing's gonna go wrong here. So here we go. So here is a white nylon brush, all right? So this is a white nylon brush. It's, it's, it's nylon and it's white. Fantastic. Those will, oh, let me remove my board now. So the, <laughs> those will get in here brilliantly. So here's the bristles. These will get in here. If you've got any scratches, they are gonna get rid of the scratches. White nylon, you use them with a pre-polish like a Tripoli. We sell them on the store at thebench.store or at thebench.shop. Just search on there for white nylon brushes. I think they're one of our best sellers. We buy them by the thousands now. But yes, in here, fantastic, pre-polish, go and grab yourself some. We sell them in packs of five. Discounts if you buy more than five. How about that? But the radio discs are really good. We also sell the e um, polishing and um, e-flex as well that are silicon in the rubber and they're just as good and um, they're really good. They the keep you a bit cleaner as well, don't they? It does keep you a bit cleaner, yeah. Mm. But don't forget, always wear eye protection, always wear a mask, just be on the safe side. But the Eve polishes, we sell them in various grits, but the advantage with the white nylon brushes, you don't need various grits, you just need a pre-polish to clean it and then have a nice soft rouge mop just to get in that little area to get the shine back. Let's have another question then. Okay. Um, Jacqueline is saying there is a new series of all the glitters happening. Anyone fancy applying? Oh, is anybody going to apply? Or are they, is it underway now? I don't I haven't heard anything. We still haven't heard anything regarding the the new series, series two. Haven't heard anything about that yet. I know they they haven't even produced a trailer for it yet. I don't think. No. Um, but I haven't seen yet if they're asking for the next round of contestants. I don't know. Mm, no, I haven't heard anything. We don't know. Just keep an eye out. Let's let's know. Let us know. Mm. Let's okay. Get, need to get in contact with Christian. Don't Christ we? Christian. So Christian. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably perhaps that's why she doesn't reply to your emails. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, uh Terry is saying what's the best angle for sharpening a graver? Um have the angle too shallow and the tip is gonna be quite delicate. So usually 45 degrees, yeah. So there's your angle there, 45 degrees, but obviously you're gonna cut away this part of your graver. So all you've got to do down is this bit down right here. So 45 is a pretty good, you sometimes can get away with a 60 if you wanted to, but the 45 I think is usually the best um, angle that you're going to be able to cut. Um, I did find, I did find, I had a, a graver in here. Um, 
Yeah, and I'd say that is pretty much 45 degrees. Let it focus on me, there we go. So I think that is pretty much 45 degrees. So that's, my, that's, my, sorry, that's my answer, but 45 degrees now. No, 45 degrees. Sorry. It's yeah. okay, no problem. I do yeah. apologise, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you want another question? Yes, please. Okay. Um, oh, I have got something very exciting to show you all, actually. Oh, go on then. Yeah. Do you want, let, let me do another question. I'll get it all ready for you while Okay. I'm, yes, yeah? please do. Yes. Okay. Um, Gillian is saying, I want to make a buttonhole badge. It has a disc on the front and a crescent moon on the back. Ooh, that goes through your buttonhole. Just not sure how to put wee leg slash tube thing that holds the crescent moon shape on the back. Don't understand. Uh, not sure how to put a little, a little leg or tube thing that holds the crescent moon shape on the back. So, like, a, if it's a buttonhole badge, it's going through a buttonhole, and the crescent moon, I'm assuming, will hold it in place. So, how to attach the, 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 the. the mm, okay. Can you um, picture it in your mind's eye? I might be picturing it wrong. So, there's the button. The crescent moon is parallel with it mm -hmm. which holds it onto the buttonhole mm. and then it's this bit between the the two parallel pieces am i right, right Gillian? is that mm, okay. what you're thinking um because the fittings are normally with a clutch like a ready-made clutch to go on the back um you can uh, let me just think of this now so you've got so Repeat it to me again. So, so, um, so, we, so we, we've got something on the front. We've got a buttonhole badge. Yes. A disc on the front. Okay. Yes. Uh, a crescent moon on the back that goes through the buttonhole. No. <laughs> oh my god. So your buttonhole is going to go like this, isn't it, or like that? So the crescent moon has to go that way. It's got to go ninety degrees. Okay. To the ninety degrees. It's got to go that way, and they've got to go like that. Otherwise, it's going to come out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they don't, they're not separated. They're one piece. Are they one piece? Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming they're one piece because, yeah, like a cuff link, Jill is saying. Yeah, that's what I've got in it's my mind's eye. Piece. And having a problem putting, joining the two together? Yeah, that's what I'm gathering. Gillian? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, so I think the best thing to do there would be uh, not to use wire, but perhaps use a bit of tubing. So that's going to make, make it a little bit thicker, but not as thick as a piece of wire. So I think the best thing to do then, you've got your disc here. You would solder on a short little piece of tubing. Yeah, here. So you solder here. Then you then would get your crescent moon on the board. Yeah. And there's your disc on top here. Yep, and then you, perhaps you would sweat solder something down here, something, solder down here, then turn it all upside down, rest that on top, perhaps put a pair of um, power panels, uh, tweezers on the top just to hold it, and then just to melt down there. And if you use tubing, you can get a nice thick, and it's not going to be bendable. Bendable? Is that such a word? Bendable? Bendy? Bendy. <laughs> flexible. Flexible, that's the word. <laughs> not flexible. So, yeah, so have, so have this as tubing. It's going to be better than having a very thin piece of wire. So yeah, so um, uh, b -b 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 sweat solder, sweat solder. This is your round disc on your soldering block. Solder, solder. Torch here. Yeah, with a bit of tube. That's the right length, or perhaps a bit longer. You can always cut it down. Solder there. Turn it upside down. Then pair of tweezers on top, just to hold it down. You sweat soldered already by here. Tube it upside down, nice and clean. Solder, bish bash bosh. <laughs> yeah. Robert's your uncle. Robert, Robert is your uncle. I think if if I'm wrong, please let me know. But uh, that's well, well. Oh, Julian is saying brilliant. Thanks. So I hope yeah. that's answered the question. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I would definitely use um, wire. No, sorry, tubing because it's going to be bigger and thicker because you're going to need a bit of strength between the two. Have wire. You can have wire by all means. 
could have a nice thick, perhaps two millimeter, three millimeter wire. I'm not quite sure whether that piece of wire would be more expensive than a bit of tubing. I don't know. So you'd have to weigh out or go on to cooks and something like that. Put, I don't know, eight mil of tubing, three mil outside diameter, three millimeter piece of wire, three mil outside diameter, and compare the prices and see which is gonna be the cheapest. But nice and big, nice and thick, it's not gonna bend. Let's have another question. Good, okay, um, good, good, good. Um, uh, Barbara, hiya Barbara, is saying, do we sign up for the workshop on your website or through Eventbrite? We're not doing it through Eventbrite. No, We're it's too be much doing ag, a, isn't it? Oh my gosh, Eventbrite is just too complicated. It's silver it? egg in the pudding, isn't it? It is, so mm -hmm. no, it's gonna be put upon um, our website, but we have to put all this together yet. Links will go out. Uh, we'll put it on social media as well, so don't forget, follow us um, on At The Bench on Facebook and also At The Bench on Instagram as well, and we will let you know about the workshops and you'll be getting your emails as well. The one thing that I do have to say is that if you have opted out of receiving emails on At The Bench, you won't get any emails. This is the thing. So if Double check, go onto your dashboard, scroll down towards the bottom, there's a little box this, that you can tick or untick, and I think you tick it if you wanna be opted out. If you have opted out, you will not get any emails, full stop. We don't spam you, we don't sell your address, we don't send you unwanted emails, we only send emails that we think are gonna be advantageous to you, like the workshops and special offers that we may have and so forth. So, up to you. I was just going to say, if you are opted in and you're worried that you've missed an email, just email me and I'll give you the info. Yeah, it'll be out. But please it, don't opt out and then... Yeah. <laughs> it'll, they'll, mm. You should all receive them by Wednesday. I'm saying that now. Yeah, so if you haven't and you're opted in, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okie dokes. But I, I, yeah, I'll always check or send you a link or whatever. So yeah, please just get in touch if you're worried. You know, don't miss out. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, good. Andre is saying, any tips for setting an emerald in a four prong setting? I cracked a beautiful clean stone and I haven't been able to stop crying since. Oh, no. don't cry. Um, give it to somebody else. It is the horrible the emeralds. This is the problem with emeralds because, as, as you know, there's so many inclusions, natural feathers. And I think this is, that's a good point, isn't it? Is because Kerry Gregory did a, I think it was a workshop on Facebook last week, and I actually missed it. Really wanted to see it, and it's when do you, when do you, um, when do you send it a stone to a gemologist for testing if you don't know what it is? And it's, it's the same thing with this, isn't it? It's, mm. but then this is where Sally's book will come in handy because you will know that, you know, the fragility, the, the body properties, the surface properties, what you can and can't do to things, yeah, and whether it's really worth the risk if you've got a stone that particularly if it's somebody else's stone. Exactly. Or one that you don't want to mm. fracture. Because I always, anything that came in to us that I was not comfortable with setting, I would always send it away to a stone setter. Um, because then, then, then they have that liability then, if they crack the stone, if they mark the stone, well then they have to replace it and make sure that is, is set in stone before you send anything to them. <laughs> set in stone. Set in stone. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, yeah, so this is my problem. And again, what I've always said, if I'm setting a stone uh, like an opal or even like an emerald, and I go, oh, that could just be pushed down a little bit more my, my brain says that, one bit of my brain says it needs to go down. My other brain says, Andrew, you botched up enough stones in the past, mate. Leave it. You've got to know when just to stop because you're going to push that down a little bit more. Crack, it's going to happen. And you think, damn, why didn't I just leave it? So, what was the question? <laughs> uh, it was, it was any, the tips, any, any tips? on... Uh, this is, the, this is the, the, the problem. It is such such a really difficult thing. You've got to make sure that the claws, you know, the, 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 the stone comes in and passes it by a thick girdle. You've got to make sure that there is hardly anything around that, around here. When you do force the claw over, this little point here is going to be pushed onto the stone. So what you really want to do is just take that point off so there's nothing pushing into the stone. So when you push this over, this will come over onto the stone 
like that. I know you may have a gap, but the point of contact is here, or you may even may be able to get that a little bit nearer. So by here, it is not pressing on any part. As I said, if you do that, and you push the claw over, this corner is going to crack the stone. So you've got to make sure there's plenty of clearance when setting the stone. Have a look at the stone. If you've got, I say, I'm not quite sure what cut you've got. If it's like this and you see some, you know, you see some inclusions coming through, don't put the claw by there, right on the inclusion, because it's going to be really the wrong place. Anything on those lines, the inclusions, are going to cause it most probably to crack and to fracture on it. So try and put the claws somewhere else. If they're on the corners here, and there's no inclusions on the corners, you're pretty much good to go. But always make sure you've got a space, especially if you're doing squares. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So and that, sometimes poop just happens, doesn't it? It happens, Like, like yeah. last year, that, yeah, yeah, that when you were setting and it was just, and you've been setting them for 30 years and it just yeah. went. Yeah. And that's I just was, life I was nowhere sometimes. Near, <laughs> yes. Nowhere near the stone and mm. it just cracked on the opposite side to where I was working, yes. Mm. These things happen. They will happen, yeah. yes. That's about it for that. Next question. Okay. Um, so yeah, please don't cry. Just don't stop trying. Basically, mm. maybe just try with practice. some. Yeah, some. CZs. Some, yeah. And just practice and practice. Yeah. Yeah, or some maybe comparably brittle stones that yeah, are not as expensive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you could. Mm. Again, just look. Look up. So I'm trying to think. What what are they? The, so maybe have a think about that. Then something that would be a comparable mm. uh, brittleness. Amethyst. Yeah. They seven, they and with this, they're a bit tougher, aren't they? Then mm -hmm. I would think, mm. but have a go, isn't yeah. It? I'll have, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a think about that. Perhaps get some advice on what you could practice on that's you won't mind smashing if it happens, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, uh, how far did we get? Uh, Stephen saying, I've had success in setting soft, soft stones in prongs by finishing the setting by gently tightening up the prongs next to each other instead of across from each other. Yes. Mm. So, yes, yeah, so let me, just, let me just, just go on to that, just to, to explain that. So, a lot of the time, you're, for argument's sake, setting a diamond and you've got a claws here, claws here, claws here, claws here. A lot of the time, when you come to push these claws down, they the metal springs back okay so you may be able to get the claw coming over touching the stone okay but the stone doesn't quite go into the end or this little nook look by here okay so instead of pushing in this direction you get a pair of pliers and you put the pliers across here okay and then you squeeze these claws this way Okay, so you squeeze them in this way. So the claws then are going to move a bit up to here a bit, okay, up to there. You do likewise down here. You squeeze the claws in this way, which is then going to cause the claws to come down to here. All right, then what you do, you get that claw and that claw with a pair of pliers here, your pliers there, pliers there, and you pull them back into position here. And the movement of pulling them and pulling them back and forth will actually pull those claws nice and tight against the stone. And what you will find then is that they will become nice and tight and positioned where they should be. So yes, yeah, so try not to go opposites because they're gonna spring back, but do them <coughs> this way, that way, and that way, and that way, and you should be just right. Sorry, I just had to look at that. Yeah, good, nice one. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, Scrap Over Engineering. Hi, Martin. Um, is there a trick to getting nice proportioned octagonal wire from a mill with square slash octagon rollers? Oh, what's octagon rollers? I don't think there is. Um, octagon. How are you going to do that on square rollers? I suppose the only way yeah, I you, were, you may have to have something like sacrificial wire. So if these are your mills, these are your V grooves here. What you may have to do is get some sacrificial like like some some copper wire perhaps, 
Um, let me think. It's a lot of pot to get this done. So perhaps what you would do is get um, two desection wires, copper wires, put them through the rollers, okay? So they become triangular, all right? And once you've got your triangulars, you can put the triangular wire in here. That's a triangular wire in here. And then try and roll it and then turn it around. I don't know, I'm just, just guessing at how I would try and get octagonal wire. <sighs> oh, uh, they look, they just look like square rollers, but my offline teachers call them octagons. You see, the, you, uh, the majority, I think every single roller mill, the V grooves, less rubbish, but you get the idea. Okay, so these are the V grooves. They are not sharp on the bottom. Um, so when you roll out a piece of metal, it is not, you don't have sharp corners. It's called Turk's head. I'm not quite sure if a Turk has a head this shape, but it's called Turk's head. Somebody may explain. So on the bottom of these Vs, there's a little flat. So that is what they may be referring to. So when you roll a piece of square, what are you laughing at me for? I'm not laughing. <laughs> Turk's head. It's called Turk's head. Yeah, don't keep saying it, love. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a flat to the bottom. Why? Because if you try and roll out a piece of wire with sharp corners, it's going to crack. It's going to introduce stress on the corners. But by just rounding off those corners a little bit, it's not going to crack the ingot as much. So what you'll find is that when you buy metal from a bullion dealer it's been drawn through a draw plate it's going to have nice sharp corners but when you manufacture your own wire and put them through the square mills it's going to have these little flats you don't want the flats make it slightly bigger and then put it through the flats as opposed to the v grooves and then your corners will become nice and sharp but you may be referring to that i don't know but i've never seen octagonal um, rolls to be honest let's have another question Great, okay. Uh, Maria is saying, does anyone know how to achieve a dripping silver look? I've seen some silver hoop earrings, for example, that look like silver is dripping down from it, very effective. I think I've seen the same ones and they yeah. are lash. You, you sent in a ticket asking how to replicate them. I have seen it, I haven't replied to you and I do apologise for that. That was on Friday, I think that was. Um, there's a guy, if you go on Instagram, oh, these things get posted up and to be honest, there's so many Facebook, no, Instagram user accounts that just repost, 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 and you see the same thing over and over and over again. And there's a guy that has done a pendant, and this guy cuts out, he melts some silver, he cuts out the silver, and he cuts it into, ooh, those sort of, that sort of shape, like cow's udder, actually, that is it. <laughs> 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 so, and then he comes and he files it and everything else. That is really laborious. Now, if you're making a one-off, that would be the best thing to do, is to literally just, just cut. I can, I, I can see now, and now is, is, is cow's udders. <laughs> That's a water droplet, all right? Don't laugh. <laughs> It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary, that isn't it? Yeah. So if you want, if you want that sort of look, and it's a one-off, I would cut it out of a piece of sheet and then file it all and then round it all off. But if you want to have a bit of an experiment with delft clay casting, get some wax. Uh, get a wax. Get a wax disc. Cut a wax disc. Any sort of shape, and then add your little bits of wax. Uh, Susan suggested a wax drip. Can you melt the wax? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're coming to. Yes. Sorry, darling. Yeah. Yeah. And you just <laughs> melt it in. You mm. can. Um, we've we've got a wax pen. We've just put on the store. Um, you can sort of introduce droplets and then smooth them all off. Um, but that's, I think, how I would go. And you'd literally just do it wax. You can. Um, <laughs> So I mentioned on my cow's udders, do they? No, Susan <laughs> said it looks like a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how, how I would do it. Oh, Wolf and Badger was the website. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, mm. Yeah, like that. And this, this comes round like this, doesn't it? And they come. Because they're not, 
they're not always what they say they are, are they? Uh, some of them are, but I know some of them are, What's that? are not gold or... Okay. Yeah. Mm. But that's... Well, that's for another, another that's, day, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so I think if you're making um, a few of them, do it in wax. Wax is absolutely the best type of thing for that. Um, you can you can do it on a flat surface, so they're they're like done, they're they're flat like this, or you know, do you know what I mean. Or you can do them so they're like three dimensional. But whichever way you do it, wax is great. You can delf clay cast it. Uh, if, you, if you did that, and you, you would you would sprue perhaps right in the middle here, um, you'd have the um, you'd have the round mold. So you would pour down this way, and that would fill the mold up that way. Okay, and that would fill that way, that way, and those would fill those. So delft clay cast is maybe quite a good idea. Put this down for me if you don't mind. It'd be nice to do a film on that with delft clay casting. I think that would be really good. Okay. So, uh, delft clay, what, like wax, drippy? Yes. Uh, okay, I wrote it down there. So that would be a good idea for a project for at the bench. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, but I think they've been mass manufactured, so they're going to have ambassador that then they just cast from. One off, cut it from a bit of sheet, file it, shape it, polish it, that sort of thing. But if you're making a matching pair, a little bit of wax, push it into your delve clay, you'll be able to make repeatable ones then, and that would be a great idea. Is there another question? Yeah, do you, do you want to see... Um... Yes, please. Can you see something cool? I would love to see something cool. What have we got? Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Drippy wax. Okay. Right. No problem, Maria. Thank you. Um, fab. Peel them off a candle. You could do. Candle okay. would be very, very, candle wax would be very, very soft for doing delft, I think. So you'd have to use something like um, a carving wax, um, like a green or a blue wax. But absolutely, yes. Shall are we ready to go on yours? Um, yes, please do. Okay. So, what have I done with it? No, it's here, here, here. Okay, so, where are we? Okay. Yeah. So, Susan, who most of you know from the chat, and this is really exciting, um, found this meteorite um, back in 2015 on Tiger Bay in Florida. Um, 39 grams uh, conodrite meteorite is being investigated and will be, give a will be given a registered name and number. It's the seventh one ever found in Florida. Um, it's thought the stone was the property of a Native American who lived there at around um, 1200 AD. Wow. Um, surface meteorites do not survive in Florida, Florida due to the weather and water damage. So the picture shows the nickel iron flex uh, reflecting light with the stone behind. Uh, so yeah, Susan found it, so she's now in the history books. Nice. 20% uh, of the stone will be stored by the University of California for future generations. How amazing is that? Um, so it was in a collection box until um, last month when um, Ch I, think, I think Charlie um, decided to cut it. Charlie is Susan's husband um, and figure it out. So it's hard enough for jewellery, so I can't wait to hear what's going to happen next. How amazing is that? Charge a fortune so for that. Stephen's, I'm assuming you've, you've seen it, Stephen. Um, how cool is that? So I've got a little bit more information, actually. So yeah, so there was that. Um, yeah, so it's gone to the lab now. Um, and Susan's promised to send us um, the photo micrographs when, when they arrive. So how cool is that? That's brilliant, isn't it? So I've got a little video that I can share with you as well on YouTube if you want to see a little bit more how there you go so that's the link to um if you want to see that the meteorite on a little film I know how fabulous that is cool what do you all think of that mm. so it's been cut and that's the surface from the inside mm. you see I was I was saying I was saying to you earlier wasn't I where is it from this is the thing it is from well, hopefully a known planets it is from space we're in space space is a big 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 place isn't is it? it it's pretty big yeah <laughs> it's big, bigger than us would <laughs> bigger than cardiff is it it's massive it's massive so it's out there isn't it but what is it where is it from 
what inside so is this what the is this what they get will they find things like that out from the testing susan i hope so yeah hardness is about six okay quite soft then mm. surprise it's, it's lasted because it, it's been flying through space yeah it's incredible isn't it absolutely yeah. incredible mm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But let us know. Let us know, let us Susan, know. how it all goes. Because we took a picture. I, we, 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 we remembered Susan the other day, didn't we? Because I remember Susan saying whenever she goes into a thrift store, she sees a button, no, a, mm, bead, a bead, she buys it. And I was in a charity shop and I found, <laughs> I found um, it's like a mason jar like that full of beads. Yeah. And I said, Susan, Susan would love this. Susan She'd would buy, buy these. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> mm. Here we are. We were talking about you the other day. Yeah. Your ears might have been burning. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, between Jupiter and Mars. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> it's a cue for a song. Yeah. D don't break into song. <laughs> don't release the alien gases. <laughs> but that's um, true. What, what could be it? Oh, my God. It's from the belt between Jupiter and Mars. So how do they know? How, presumably that's... The, how do they... I don't know. Is it from the composition of the rock? That is amazing. It is from the asteroid belt. It's too small to have... Been part of a planet. Oh, great! Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's what Susan thinks from the belt between Jupiter and Mars. Wow. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I can't wait to hear yeah, more about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. More about it, absolutely. That's really cool. Uh, Stephen's saying, as far I can see, uh, olivine eye and, and a mix of other stones, but only a guess. Oh yeah, please do send some more photos if you have them. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. That's amazing. How many rocks are stones? Are from outer space that are here on Earth. Well, I started to wonder that because you might see that and just. Mm. Mm. I mean, obviously, there are people out there who do know what they're looking for who find them, but mm. yeah. Someone was saying the other day that all diamonds are from outer space. They're mm -hmm. from deep in the Earth's. Have they been. Have they been yeah, I, I, I don't know how that, how that would work, whether a meteorite hits the planet and whatever's on the meteorite gets embedded in the planet and then the planet all like goes around it and I don't know. It's a new one, isn't it? It's a new one. Should we have one more yeah. question before okay. we have to go? Yeah, so brilliant. Thank you so, so much, Susan, uh, Susan for sending that because this is fascinating. I'm so excited to hear more about it. So that is brilliant. Um, we don't find anything like that around here, do we? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Still got this. <laughs> I think you should send that off for testing. I think we might be disappointed. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, um, <laughs> let's see, uh, okay, so, oh, right, jumping around the place. Okay, should we make this the last one? Yes, we have to, I'm afraid. Okay, what should we do, what should we do? Um, I'm going to pick a random one. Okay. Oh, diddly do, diddly do. Um, right, oh, okay, Sarah is saying, I'm making a double band cuff, two mil round, 925 with 1.5 mil prongs for a tumble of Bradrite. I need help to solder back a couple, but solder back a couple of prongs and manage to snap off. I really don't want to melt it. Um, so the best thing to do, I can't. I'm trying to imagine what it's going to be like, but like with all sort of soldering operations, you have to protect all the other areas around it. Um, so, just trying to think what we can do. So, say you've got wire going around and I don't know exactly how and there's like a double one that comes around like this yeah but then you want to put a claw up here and say a claw up here and it's just they've just snapped off perhaps now the, don't forget the claws that you've got are going in mass are smaller than the rest of it so you put your flame here perhaps not there but where you're going to solder by here this little claw is going to heat up far quicker than the rest of the piece. So you're going to have to make sure that you heat up the rest of the piece more before you've got here. So if that has, say that is a, a one centimeter, okay? But this is like eight centimeters. So in theory, you have to e heat up all this eight times more than that little chap. So how do you do it? You can put your torch around here and play your torch around and around and around. What I would also do is if, if this is something like, I'm not quite sure exactly how you're doing it, but this is how I would do it. So if you've got your claw, 
put a little bit of solder, sweat solder, on the bottom of the claw, first of all, okay? So you don't have to go adding any solder, and the solder's not gonna run where it's not supposed to, and the solder's not gonna run um, when it gets to a temperature, but not on anything else. So put the solder on the small little piece, okay? Put this piece in contact with the wire, plenty of flux around this area, okay? Then, what you want to do then, is don't put any heat in this area. So this is a no-no, no heat. You want to move your flame, you want to move your flame back and forth. If this prong, this claw, is in contact with that little bit of metal, okay, you can use um, like, a, like a third hand to hold on to it, okay, right on the very end. Don't put the third hand down here, put the third hand right on the top here, just to hold it in place. Okay, so there's your base down here, holding it in place. Move your torch up and down, up and down. Because this little claw is in contact with the wire, heat is being transferred from here, and it's going, oh, this bit of metal is in contact with me, I'm gonna give it some heat. So as well as the heat traveling around the wire, it's gonna go, oh, let's go up into the wire. And all the heat's gonna be going, oh, like this, up and down, up and down, okay? So the more you heat this, the more then the heat is gonna travel up to here. By doing it this way, you will not melt the claw if you do not put the flame on the claw. And this is the reason why I love doing this type. People will often bring the flame here. No, because you've got to heat all this up. That is going to melt. The solder is going to melt, but if this piece of wire is not at the right temperature, the solder will not flow. Okay, so it isn't the flame that melts the solder. It is the temperature of the metal that melts the solder. So once you've heated this and this is getting a nice heat and the flux is, whoa, the flux is bubbling, 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 bring the flame then a little bit more so by here and perhaps concentrate then the flame in this area by here. The heat is gonna get hot enough to travel up to here, up into that claw. And when this area here is hot enough for that solder to flow, this claw is gonna get hot enough and the solder is just gonna go, oh, I'm going to flow all over you because you're the right sort of heat for me. So the solder goes <laughs> like that. It goes Bleh. and the solder will flow exactly where you want it to flow. You. <laughs> What's the matter, Louise? You right there, Louise? Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the solder will flow. That way you will not melt that claw because you are not putting a flame on that claw. The flame would melt it. Put the flame on the band, the heat gets transferred when it's the right temperature because this will get to the same temperature as this without the flame on it because silver, copper, gold, it's, I've lost the word now, I've got so excited now. Um, it, it transfers the heat very, very easily, doesn't it? What's the word I'm looking for? Conducts. Conducts, that's it, well done. It <laughs> conducts the heat so, so quickly so that the heat will go ooh, up to here onto the claw, the claw goes, I love you, I want to be there, like this. And the, and the claw goes, there with the solder, the solder goes, there. The solder's on the claw already. So the solder's going to go, there like that, and it's going to spread all over it, and it's going to be perfect. That's it, that's, that's the question. I have no words have, <laughs> for that. Just as well you Display. don't really, isn't it, yeah. yes. So, that is how you would do it. <laughs> it's all about where the heat is, and don't forget if you if you have got that and the you, you put the flame pointing away so you're looking down on top you've got two wires you try and put a claw here don't put your flame by here because the flame's going to travel across onto this wire and it will melt put the flame the other way over the top so it is solely heating this here and there's no extra flame hitting anything as well so always make sure think of, because the flame your flame Okay, so here's your torch, right? There's your flame, okay? There is no heat this way. There is heat this way. And there's the flame, but the heat carries on down there. So if you're soldering something, okay, and you've got something here, and you've got something here, okay, you can solder here safely, because this is by here under the flame, and it will not get any heat. But if you want to bring your flame on this area here, okay, the flame is going to keep on traveling and it's going to burn whatever you've got here and melt. So again, always think about the direction of the flame. 
always keep the flame pointing away from the rest of the jewellery and you should be fine. Excellent. Like that? I think to end, so. To end the afternoon, you're welcome. Sorry we've had to cut it a little bit short. We haven't got you quite your whole hour. Do apologise, but we were a little bit late starting today, weren't I we? I think next week, because the same thing next week, Sharon's not back, we're going to need to shut the shop a little bit earlier just to make sure that we're not late. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yes. So I think we should do that, shouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. Yes, we do apologise. It's the fact that, yes, we're short-staffed. It's the reason why we're taking on other members of staff to help. Yeah. Help, because it's just been manic, absolute manic. So don't forget, guys, thumbs up. As My eyes are getting terrible. As Beth, as Beth says, give this the thumbs up. Really would appreciate it. Um, but let us know the results on your uh, meteorites. Let us know about that. Susan, that'd be absolutely brilliant. And perhaps we can share the information mm. next week or whenever you get that. Nice watch band. Yeah, it's, I just wanted something a bit different on my Garmin. The nice black. and bright. You like orange, don't I, you? I'm into, I'm into orange. Look, I'm into orange. A bit of an orange moment. thing going on, yeah. I've got orange socks. I've got an orange running top. Your orange trainers. Orange trainers. Mm. They're for indoors only, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Louise, do you need to say anything else? Um, I don't think so. Apologies if we haven't got to your question. Really do apologise for that, but get in early next time. Next Monday will be our next Q&A. And don't forget, we'll be doing our workshop now this coming Saturday at 3 p.m. It's all about bezel setting, making up round bezels, making up oval bezels, soldering them onto rings, making pendants, getting the right height and so forth. I'm going to have to ask Louise if I can raid her stone drawers what do you want stone drawers for the um i've yes. got some nice malachite so oh, they went back didn't they actually and i've got lots of cabs anyway excellent so mm. you're getting cabs nothing too uh, nothing too fancy no irregular show stones we're starting off with nice simple basics and that would be absolutely fantastic i have a flory jacket going spare is that flory i can't see Mm. my eyes right oh. everyone take care we're going to be going now we've got to close the shop up everyone take care enjoy the rest of your week keep an eye out on your email social media for the details of the workshop that's going to be coming on saturday Louise, do you say anything else no i don't think so sure yes excellent everyone take care it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from louise goodbye everyone take care we will see you all next week Bye bye